Greetings again, Chumbas. Hello. This time we're going to go over uh, the healing rates in Cyberpunk. How long does it take to recover from injuries? And everything from the gunshot wound, falling down the stairs, mug, getting mugged, getting beat up in the alley, whatever it is, you took some damage, you want to feel better, this is how it happens. Uh, you've got a couple ways you can do it. You can use first aid, uh, you can use medical tech. Depends on what character you have available. And you, by the way, you cannot heal yourself. You, you, physician, heal thyself. That doesn't work in this game, right? You gotta go see a doctor. You gotta go see a ripper doc, go to the hospital, go to a clinic, go somewhere to get medical assistance. Now, hopefully, you had a character with first aid that was in nearby when you got injured. If it was serious, if it was real bad, uh, they rolled first aid. Uh, assuming they were successful in their role, they were able to stop the bleeding. They were able to not let you get worse, keep you from getting worse. They applied a tourniquet, they did some bandaging, they did whatever was necessary to keep you from getting worse. And we mentioned real quick, we want to see a video specifically on um, the difference between first aid, which anybody can have, any character can have, and medical tech, which only med techs can have. Uh, I'll throw, I'm not sure where it'll be up here or in the description if nothing else. I'll try to throw a card up there if I can. Um, and I got a video that describes the difference between those two, so I'll mention that. But with first aid, beyond that initial getting wounded, getting hurt, um, for if all you have is a character with first aid to give you some attention, change your bandages, keep an eye on you, that kind of stuff, while you heal up, you will gain half of a point a day. Can take a while if you're in serious you're in mortals i mean if you're in mortals you need like life support you need full-on nursing staff doctor staff care so if all you have is somebody with first aid you're only going to gain half a point and your ref may even look at that go first aid you're immortal three that's not good enough you're actually faster than that care can help you get better so can something to consider and depends on the ref of course um now Medical tech, on the other hand, if you have someone, an actual doctor or taking care of you, there you can gain up to one point a day. Now, these do not stack. Okay, you got somebody first aid, you got somebody with medical tech both taking care of you. So, one point a day is the max you can get back with just normal traditional care like of that type. Now, the other things can affect that um, if you're actually in a hospital or place with full hospital uh, type equipment, staff, and so on. That can give you a bonus, potentially a baby a bonus, give the med tech role a bonus. Um, I took my notes here real quick. Let me see, where was it here? The bonuses or, yes, okay. If you have med tech, if that, if you do have full hospital staff, surgery center, all that stuff available, that med tech gets a plus five to their role to care for you. Now, you still only gain one point a day back. And if they have to do surgery, you may actually take damage from that surgery and have to heal that in addition to whatever your wound was. But there you go. Um, if you're on site, if you're getting carried to a clinic or hospital, you got a trauma team ambulance there, med tech gets a plus three. Now, if the trauma team crew when that med tech is with trauma team and they're NPCs they're not a character in the group then that role all of that is handled by your ref ref decides how many points you get back and they, they can handle it by role they can handle it however they want to do it because in that case the NPC it's however they want uh, the other thing if it's an appropriate item that for whatever the damage is for whatever the situation is if there's a cryo take available uh, you lose part of a limb or a limb or leg or something. If there's an appropriately sized cryo tank available and the ref decides it hasn't been too long and all that stuff, that will give the med tech a plus three to save that one. And then they got surgery and stuff later to, re to handle all that. Now, depending on your injury, you may get cyberware as replacements. You may be get, I mean, this might not just be limbs. This could be a cyber liver or something like that to help with the recovery to speed the recovery if you've got some serious internal injuries um, potentially you could just get cyberware replacements and kind of jump ahead on that healing time
At least that's the way I would run it. The book isn't, the core book isn't clear exactly, like, if uh, the ref decides that it was your lung that got seriously injured. That's where most of the damage was because your lung got punctured, okay? And you decide to just get a cyber lung. Well, in the ref, the book doesn't say this, but as a ref, I would say, well, if you're getting a cyber lung, yeah, you got some damage potentially from the surgery of having that installed, but the, but it's already done, it's already in place, it doesn't have to heal. So that can affect your healing times, affect your damage, all that stuff. So but there you go, depends on your ref. The other thing I want to touch on, the book does uh, comment on speed healers, a drug, nanites, a medication that will actually help you heal faster. Now in the core book, uh, it costs 1650 eBay per treatment and a treatment will help you heal an additional one point a day. Now this next part again, now the, by the way, I should mention side effects. If you use speed healers, you got a couple things. Uh, the book specifically states that you'll have, for after the treatment, you'll have a die six divided by three for a week of um, neg minus, uh, negative to your reflexes, excuse me. So your reflexes minus a die six divided by three for a week after, the, after a given treatment with speed healers. Uh, this accounts for them taking over some thing process or trying to get you healed faster. It slows you down. Some things don't work right while you're healing, right? Now, the book doesn't comment about this as far as I can tell. I, I couldn't remember. I went and looked it up. I didn't see it in there. Um, if your ref allows it and you've got the cash, or depending on your NPCs that the ref has available and so on, you may have other avenues to get it, um, you could take 10 doses, 10 treatments. All right, you're, you're down by 12 points or something, take 10 treatments, boom, 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 10 treatments of uh, speed healers. Now, theoretically, 10, you'd have, what, three and whatever, three and a third? Uh, die six, uh, negative to your ref reflexes for a week if you did all those treatments, because you got die six divided by three per treatment, right? So you got to balance that out Potentially, that could be a big deal, <laughs> really big deal um, on your reflexes. On the other hand, there are things you can do to boost up your reflexes even temporarily. Uh, drugs and stuff you could take there. Of course, they come potentially with their own side effects. Now, you get into combat drugs, for example, can boost your reflexes for a time, but can cause neurological damage, can um, uh, be very, very addictive. Uh, the way I've played and games I've played in as well, when we've done speed healers, we also have considered the uh, speed healers potentially to be addictive, depending on the game, depending on the ref. Uh, sometimes speed healers themselves can be very addictive, that your body doesn't, if you use speed healers too much, then your body does not heal properly on its own. You have to have speed healers to heal. So that's another potential wrinkle for your refs. If your players try to overuse speed healers, and try to counter the side effects and stuff. You can you run numbers, you can make it happen. There are ways to make it work and continue, you know, get mortally injured and then and that day, that afternoon, be back at back in combat doing something else. It can happen. But as a ref, if you don't want that fast kind of progression, you want some more consequences to being injured, you want to have to go, okay, you are sitting out the next three weeks getting healed up. Well one way to do that is add in uh, potential, uh, like I said, addiction issues, other side effects of speed healers, availability. Speed healers, the speed healers, whether it's a given brand or a street version or whatever, may not be available immediately. You may not be able to just walk into a clinic and go, hey, I need a shot of speed healer. You know, it's not, it may not be that easy. That's up to the ref, though, how that works. Uh, so I've covered that stuff. Uh, a couple of things along these lines I want to mention. Um, it kind of affects these things too. If you're getting cyberware, or you're, or you were injured, you lost a limb, you put it in a cryo tank, your that limb is safe. You decide, well, I'm not going to put that back on. I'm going to get a cyber arm instead. Okay, get super chrome, right? High fashion, whatever cyber arm. If you do that, you have an option to according to the main book, straight out of the main book, not putting aside whatever your ref wants to do, of course they can modify these rules. Um, 
you can save that limb in a cryo tank in storage indefinitely. Um, according to the book, 100 EB a month or 200 EB a month. You got two levels you can pay for in storage. As a ref, I would add another level or two maybe to that, uh, higher costs, of course. At 100 EB a month, there is per month a 20% chance that somebody that might have access to it, somebody in that company, in that storage facility, a 20% chance they might decide to sell it off as parts to somebody else. And you won't find out. You may continue to pay your 100 eBay, then some point, six months down the road, you decide uh, you want to get rid of that cyber arm, you want to go back to meat. Your arm's gone. You never know. But 100 eBay a month, you get 20% chance a month that it'll be disappeared. <clears throat> uh, 200 EB a month, and there's, it goes down to a 5% chance. As a ref, like I said, I would add another level of that. I might jump it way up, say 500 EB a month, and have a 1% chance, a half a percent chance. There's always a chance somebody somehow is going to get at it. But do a higher cost to have a more secured facility, um, higher standard for employees, background checks, stuff, you know, better chance that it'll still be there when you want it. Uh, another uh, couple of things I want to go over, uh, the, the result, the implications of being wounded, right? If you have light wounds, you're in the light wounds category, basically it doesn't affect you. You know, you're, yes, you're hurt, but it's a scratch, it's a whatever, it doesn't affect your dice rolls, right? Uh, now, I will say, depending on the injury, if there was a very specific injury described, you know, uh, yeah, it only did three points of damage, but it did this to your hand or to your arm or something. Well, that might affect a particular thing you're going to do. Depends on the ref, if they want to get far into the weeds on that or not, or how they want to handle it. But technically, if you're in light wound, you got no issues, no rolls, no effect on your rolls, etc. Role play it. Always role play it. But it doesn't have to affect the dice rolls. Uh, serious wounds. If you get into serious wounds... Now, to heal, first of all, to heal and not get worse, dressings, bandages, etc., depending on what the injury was, pardon me, have to be changed once every day. All actions that you take, anything regardless, take a minus two to your reflexes, okay, all, no matter what you're doing. So, doesn't mean you can't get out there and continue to play, to be in combat to go do whatever it is you need to do, continue the job that you're working, whatever it is. But minus two to all your reflex rolls, and you still got to get some care. Uh, that could be if there's a, a med tech or a character with first aid in your group that can handle those things, or it might just be you stop by a clinic once a day and pay them a little bit of money. They change your dressings. They get you cleaned up. You continue to heal that point a day. Uh, first aid, of course, half a point a day. Now, if you get into critical wounds, this is a little bit more, more of a big deal. When you're in critical wounds, in order to heal, you have to be in bed, um, resting, not doing anything strenuous, for at least half a day, every day, in order to regain those points. If you don't rest, if you don't go, just go sit and watch TV somewhere or whatever, something... I, I, as a ref, I wouldn't say you literally have to be in bed necessarily, but you couldn't do anything but sit somewhere, lay in a bed somewhere, and whatever, in order to regain hit points. You do hit points. This isn't that other game. This is Cyberpunk. They're not hit points. Anyway, sorry. Um, so there you go. You have to rest for at least half a day. Also, if you're in critical wounds, the rest, the other half of the day, you got... That's my nose. I borrowed that wrong. You get a negative 40 reflexes no matter what you're doing. But for that half a day, you shouldn't be doing anything that requires a roll because you're supposed to be resting. The half a day, the other half of the day, you can do limited, simple tasks. You, you can do some simple things, do some, some basic shopping or something like that, do some stuff on a computer, right? Sim, uh, sim, sim uh, brain dance, something like that, whatever. But... Anything you do in critical wounds is negative 40 reflexes, period, right? Also, your dressings have to be changed twice a day, and you do should have, do need to have nursing care of some sort, medical care available. They don't have to be standing over you all the time. It could be 
you know, you're paying a nurse or a medical person of some sort to come in and check on you, or again, somebody with first aid or a med tech in your group that's helping to take care of you. Uh, that's critical wounds. Now, when you get into mortal, when you get into mortal wounds, you are bedridden. Period. That's it. You're not going anywhere. You can't. Um, you're going to have stitches. You're going to have major injuries. Um, other issues. Okay. At mortal three, specifically at mortal three and worse and above, you're probably comatose, 50% chance, uh, at least most of the time anyway. Also, if you're in mortals, you're probably on some kind of life support. You're hooked up to some kind of machine for breathing, for, for respiration, that is, for something. You've got injuries that are so severe, you require serious medical attention just to continue on. And, to, to heal. Um, constant care is required when you get into this level, right? You got to have nursing staff, uh, potentially the med tech, the whatever, always just always available. You're you're in CC or ICU, depending on what part of the world you're in, how they might term that. Critical or intensive care is what I'm talking about. In a hospital, you're a river docs facility where that's pretty much all there that staff there is doing is taking care of you, that kind of stuff. Now, the positive side is once you've been stabilized, you know, in mortals, you go into mortals, you're rolling death saves periodically, depending on your ref, depending on how they count it. Um, once you've been stabilized by a medical facility, medical staff, med tech, whatever it is, um, you don't have to continue to roll death saves. That's the benefit here. Uh, but again, see, this is where you get, especially in mortals, assuming you got the money. This is where uh, speed healers might really come in. You might want to take a few doses, even uh, even though you're going to have that hit to your reflexes and stuff. It might be worth taking multiple treatments of speed healers to at least get yourself up into the critical area or even better, but at least up into the critical range, just so you're not in that can't do anything. You're stuck in bed. You're unconscious. You're out of it. You're in a coma, whatever, that kind of stuff. Move yourself out of that area but depends on the game depends if they're available depends on your ref depends if you got the cash all right so there you go that's what i wanted to cover i appreciate you being here check out the other videos again remember that one um uh first aid versus med medical tech roles i've got a video just on that i'm going to link that here someplace uh, check out the other videos on skills on how to play how to build a character some other things, anything that you're interested in. I'm doing a video on it. If you don't see the video on it yet, so drop me a comment. Let me know what you uh, are looking for more, inter more info on or you might want help with. I appreciate it. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.